The Panama Canal is the bread and butter of the Panamanian economy, generating about 30% of the gross domestic product of Panama. In the present configuration, three sets of locks, each with two shipping lanes, lift the boats from either the Caribbean Sea or the Pacific to the Gatun Lake. To provide the necessary water supply for the operation of the locks, the Gatun Dam, then the world's largest, was built to increase the Gatun Lake Reservoir. A new and third shipping lane, complete with three new locks, is under construction, as you can see behind me, but more on that later. It was actually first thought of already in 1534, when the Spanish wanted a quicker route to Peru, thus securing an advantage over the evil Portuguese. However, construction of the canal did not commence until 1881, when the French put in their best effort, supervised by the Suez Canal chief engineer. The attempt was abandoned in 1890 due to serious financial and human losses. 22,000 workers died here, mostly due to the diseases like the yellow fever and the mosquito-induced malaria. Nasty little buggers. The project also depleted the French government coffers almost to the point of bankruptcy. The Panama crossing caught interest from the USA. After helping Panama secure its independence from Colombia in 1903, the Americans secure rights to build and administer the Panama Canal zone indefinitely. The USA did not miss a step and built the canal from 1904 to 1914. They addressed the disease problems in various ways, among them pouring diesel and bunker oil on the mosquito spawning grounds, but still had to suffer the loss of almost 6,000 workers. Diplomatic tensions between Panama and the USA rose as Panamanians claimed rights to the canal administration, resulting in student revolts and the riots on Martyrs Day in 1964, when several Panamanians and US soldiers were killed. The USA gradually relinquished the rights to the canal and finally handed over the administration rights to Panama in 1999. Shipping corporations have adopted the size of their ships to fit in the canal locks giving rise to the term Panamax-sized vessels. The Panamax dimensions of the existing canal is a length of 295 meters and a beam of 32 meters. To meet the demand for the transportation of bigger ships through the Panama Canal, a demand mainly caused by competition from the Suez Canal in Egypt and the possibility of a permanent opening of the Northwest Passage in the Arctic, a new and third shipping lane is under construction, as you can see behind me. The so-called new Panamax dimensions will increase the maximum length of the ships with 25%, allowing 370 meter long ships to pass the new locks, carrying up to 12,000 containers. The Gatun Lake Reservoir, feeding water to the locks on both sides of the canal, is on the verge of being insufficient for the operation of the existing canal. However, dredging of the lake along with the construction of nine water reutilization basins in the new locks will allow the canal to operate without the addition of new reservoirs. The design of the new locks are actually a carbon copy of the Berenrecht locks in the port of Antwerp in Belgium. The locks of Antwerp will still hold the lock size world record even after the completion of the new Panama Canal locks. The estimated total cost of the project is around $6 billion, but my experience with budgets tell me that this number will rise. The new locks are expected to open for traffic in 2015, but my experience with finalization of building projects tell me that this number will also rise. Later today, the mighty blue marble will traverse the Gatun locks on the Atlantic side of the Panama Canal, by many recognized as one of the seven engineering world wonders and enter the Gatun Lake, as you can see behind us. The next stop, the Pacific. <laughs>